Hey friends, Ash here with Gensense with another week in fragrance. The video series where I talk about upcoming releases, give you their note breakdowns, how the brand is marketing them, how they tell you it's going to come across and give you my general thoughts. This week we've got fragrances from Versace, from Tom Ford, from Lacoste, and more. So a bunch of new fragrances have been announced just in this past week. It actually hasn't been that long since I did my last this week in fragrance video which with everything going on in the world right now has become more of a <laughs> this month in fragrance than this week in fragrance but thankfully we have some new fragrances that have been announced that look really interesting so let's jump into this and check them out now first up i want to talk about the new spice bomb night vision eau de parfum from Victor and Rolf. Now, I did mention this in my first impression of Polo Red Eau de Parfum because it was announced, I think, that day when I was doing that first impression, so I talked about it really quickly. In case you missed that video, I will very quickly run through the new Spice Bomb Flankers notes and give you maybe my general thoughts on that. So this is for those of you that missed that video. I just figured I'd quickly go over it again. It's got top notes of grapefruit, green apple, lemon, black pepper, chili, nutmeg, clove, and cardamom. It's a lot. A mid of rosemary, clary sage, coriander, mastic resin, lavender, and peppermint. And a base of patchouli, cedarwood, pistachio, frankincense, peru balsam, fir balsam, labdanum, and benzoin. So there is a lot, a lot going on in that note breakdown. It's very busy. So when you look at that, you're gonna notice that in the opening, you've got a lot of fruit, so there should be a lot of sweetness, but there's also a lot of spice, which again, you would assume with the fragrance of the name Spice Bomb. One thing that I notice is missing spice-wise is cinnamon. Now there's black pepper, there's chili, there's nutmeg, there's clove, there's cardamom, into the mid there's coriander. There's uh, a lot going on in terms of the spices, but no cinnamon. And then in the base, you have resins, you have woods, and then of course, something that sticks out, pistachio, kind of out of nowhere. According to the house, this is a deeper, richer scent than Spice Bomb Night Vision Eau de Toilette. It has an explosion of fresh top notes with a zesty lemon injecting a burst of freshness into spicy black pepper, chili, nutmeg, and clove. It says it has a cool initial impression that develops into a green aromatic and then turns into an addictive, sensual base of smoky incense, fir balsam, and the rest of the base notes. Now, I probably don't have to tell you, but Night Vision Eau de Toilette was not really well received by the fragrance community at large. Most people said it was kind of an abomination <laughs> to the Spice Bomb name because it really wasn't spicy. And it was more so like Victor and Rolf's take on an Invictus style fragrance. And that didn't sit well with a lot of people. Now, in terms of just being a mass appealing fragrance that could pull you compliments, it did that. But was it really new? Nah, not so much. And did it really fit in with the Spice Bomb ethos of being a Spice Bomb? No, it didn't. And now we have this Eau de Parfum. So who knows? It's either going to be a return to form with the Spice Bomb line and it's going to really turn heads and people are going to say, oh yeah, this is good. This is what Night Vision should have been to begin with. Or they're going to keep going down that path that they started on with uh, the Eau de Toilette. Uh, we'll see. Next up, let's talk about the new Lacoste. And this one is called Match Point. And I imagine like with pretty much all Lacoste fragrances, once this hits discounters, it's gonna be pretty affordable. And I will say that the Lacoste Loam line of fragrances is pretty good. As far as affordable, cheap fragrances go, that line, solid. So this one's gonna have a top of basil and pink pepper, a mid of gentian and clary sage, and I've gotta tell you, Never seen that note before, so not exactly sure how that's gonna come across in the fragrance, but we'll see. And a base of vetiver and cashmere, which leads me to believe it's going to be a modern, kind of warm, fuzzy, uh, woodsy dry down. We're seeing cashmere in, in lots of fragrances nowadays. Okay, 
Match point. Follow your instincts and take action with the new Eau de Toilette for men from Lacoste. The green energy of basil and gentian bitterness, and if I'm pronouncing that incorrectly, I apologize, combines in a breathtaking freshness. The thrilling black elegance of woody vetiver brings strength and intensity. So according to the house, this has an explosive fusion of two contrasting accords. One of them is the fresh green accord we just talked about. The other seems focused on vetiver, bringing a woody strength and intensity. And again, that's gonna be vetiver paired up with cashmere in. Match Point is presented in an elegant bottle whose details pay homage to the iconic codes of tennis. So we have a new line coming out from Lacoste here with Match Point. We'll see how popular it is, how successful it is, and how many flankers come after it in the future. But there we go, Match Point. Looks like it's going to be green, fresh, and modern woody. Next up, let me quickly go over a new fragrance from Playboy. The magazine playboy make the cover for him so make the cover of playboy for him playboy fragrances typically are very inexpensive at discounters they're very 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 cheap uh, some people do like them as kind of a casual fragrance that you just spray on and you don't really think about it some of the playboy fragrances are going to have similarities to other things out there this one if you're interested in wait for it to hit discounters 100% because when it does, it's not gonna be expensive. So this one's gonna have a top of bergamot, green cardamom, and green apple, mid of lavender water, fruits, and violet, and a base of amber wood, patchouli, and tonka. Nothing really jumps out at me with that note breakdown. It seems pretty par for the course. Seems like it's gonna be just a fruity, sweet, kind of modern mint scent. When you see the amber wood in there paired up with tonka, lavender, water, it's gonna give it a clean freshness through the mid, I would imagine. And then in the opening, green cardamom, green apple, and bergamot, again, going for more of a fresh, sweet vibe uh, from what I can pick up here. Okay, next up, one of the big ones, the new Eros from Versace, Eros Eau de Parfum. So this is gonna follow up, of course, on Eros Flame, which followed up on the original Eros Eau de Toilette. There is a huge, huge write-up from Versace on this, so I'm just going to cover a couple of the uh, the main points. But first off, let me start you off with the note breakdown. So it's going to have a top of Italian lemon, Italian mandarin, spearmint, and then candied apple. From the original, maybe the fact that they named it a candied apple is what is going to jump out to me most there and the heart has geranium, clary sage, and amber max. Amber max can come across really strong. So I'd imagine that they don't have a huge amount of amber max in here because even a small amount will really, really come through. And then in the base, Virginia cedar, vetiver or pure, patchouli or pure, sandalwood leather, and vanilla. So the way that Versace is going to kind of advertise this is the vetiver and patchouli are going to be as the uh, essence of patchouli and the essence of vetiver, just to kind of clear that up. Versace Eros Eau de Parfum, the new masculine fragrance is all about sensuality and power, not afraid to show off or to reveal its extremes. It brings a new facet of the original Eros in the EDT form now to an EDP concentration, more daring and powerful. According to Donatella Versace, she imagined a heroic, passionate man, almost a Greek god. The fragrance is made up of notes that express sensuality and power and extreme strength. So that is the third time here that I've read that it has power or it has uh, strength. So <laughs> it sounds like this is gonna be one that's just a beast, just real powerful fragrance that projects and lasts. And if it's stronger than the Eau de Toilette, yeah, this is gonna be a monster. Now watch us all get it in when it comes out and spray it on. <laughs> this is just a skin scent after 30 minutes. We'll all just be like, what? Eros Eau de Parfum interprets excess. Ultra contrasted by the extremely experienced to the extremely sweet. Uh -oh. 
a new chapter based on the depth of its woody cedar vetiver patchouli accord, enlivened by the blazing and energetic light of the duality of lemon and mandarin, strictly Italian and animated by an unprecedented candied apple note. So there it is, an unprecedented candied apple note. So when you smell it, you're just gonna be like, oh my God, this note, unprecedented. The decadence of vanilla dares to flirt with leather in the final note, a fatal and provocative weapon to stand out with intoxicating and creamy effects with vibrant contours reinforcing its oriental character. So there we go. There's a rundown on Eros Eau de Parfum. It comes basically in the same bottle style as the original Eros from what I can see. Uh, the only difference being that this one says Eau de Parfum underneath Eros. The bottle on this looks pretty much the exact same as the original Eros, only it has Eau de Parfum written underneath Eros. And once this is released, I imagine you're gonna see just a flood of videos talking about it because the original Eros and also Eros Flame are quite popular. Next up, let's talk about the new Tom Ford Black Orchid Parfum. Now this one being a Tom Ford and being a parfum is not gonna be cheap. From what I could see online, it's gonna be $150 for a 50 mil size, 195 for a 100 mil, and of course that's at retail. Let me quickly read you off the notes. Black truffle, elang elang, black orchid, black plum, rum absolute, and patchouli from the house. Black Orchid Parfum is the most potent version of Black Orchid ever made. It amplifies the iconic sensuality of the original. Its aphrodisiac effect elevates the most elusive and darkest of flowers to powerfully seductive new heights. Created exclusively for Tom Ford, the Tom Ford Black Orchid was born of his quest for the perfect flower. Luxurious, elegant, pure, and sophisticated. New Black Orchid Parfum offers an amplified presence of the precious essential oil, revealing new olfactive dimensions where hypnotic Black Orchid and narcotic Elang Elang are heightened and luscious Black Plum becomes even more pronounced. Celebrating the impact of the seductive breakthrough, the parfum is presented with an all over gold flacon from plaque to cap. So there we go, a new Black Orchid, a more powerful, seductive Black Orchid. Next up, just a note breakdown from a new David Beckham fragrance called Bold Instinct. Again, oftentimes you can find these fragrances at discounters for a good price. So if you're interested, wait for it to pop up there. It's got a top of pineapple, bay leaf, and peaty whiskey, which is the note that sticks out the most to me, grabs my attention the most. If you're a fan of whiskey, you're gonna find it interesting that this is not just a whiskey note where you're going to be expecting a warm, sweet booziness they will most often find, but this one is peaty. In the mid, we've got cardamom, nutmeg, and cinnamon, and the base, patchouli, amberwood, and musk. So yet again, amberwood in the base of another new release for men. The top is the most interesting part of this fragrance to me, just going off of the note breakdown, where you've got pineapple, bay leaf, and peaty whiskey all competing. Could be interesting. And with that, I'm gonna wrap up this week in fragrance. Let me know what you're most interested in in the comments below. I would assume most of you are going to say Eros Eau de Parfum or Black Orchid Parfum. Those are the two I'm most interested in checking out personally. As always, thanks for hanging out with me today. Thanks for all your support. Stay safe out there and I'll see you tomorrow with another fragrance video. See you guys.